Well, my first take home is it's amazing. You must go. You must save your pennies and go. So the three of us are back from Barcelona now. There were two and a half thousand people from 70 countries, as I understand it, at the World Parks and Congress. What did we take away? What kind of themes did you observe? Well, one of the themes I observed was um, hope that there is a lot of repurposing or medication, that there is lots of other things, not just medication we can do to help ourselves, whether it be singing or yoga or laughing out loud. Overarching for me, the feeling of camaraderie I came away with and hope, um, I think that was that was the best thing for me. But science wise, I would say probably the um, repurposing of drugs I found quite interesting. When it comes to Parkinson's, Nutrition and exercise are key, and that was definitely confirmed. Considering in the 1980s, exercise wasn't even su a suggestion, and now it's sort of one of the main things you can do, um, particularly strength exercise as well as aerobics. So that was really interesting. The importance of the Parkinson's community coming together, actually face to face, I think was integral. I think it should happen once a year, not necessarily in, in a World Parkinson's Congress, but I think we should do some kind of smaller event once a year because just that face to face contact, knowing that you're or confirming that you're not alone. There are other people with similar symptoms. You can connect, you can share. Just you don't get that from a half an hour Zoom meeting or, or, or anything like that. So, so I was at Kyoto four years ago, and it was interesting to see the progress between the two congresses. Um, obviously, this one was delayed a year because of COVID. They're normally every three years. Um, but in terms of the basic science, I, I felt like it's moving on, but quite slowly. I think sort of all the pieces of the jigsaw feel like they're there, but we've yet to assemble it. Um, so there was some interesting talk about gut first um, versus brain first Parkinson's. I think that's becoming more of an established theme now that it can start in one of two places. Um, so that was kind of interesting. I think the role of alpha synuclein is becoming clearer um, with this um, new test that the, the Michael J. Fox Foundation came up with recently, and, and we we put a video out on that as well. And so I think we're sort of starting to home in on the the underlying sort of um, pathology of the disease. But there's still a long way to go. I think there's still lots of pieces that we don't know how they fit together. Um, but but there's certainly progress on the basic science. There's this definite theme around sort of nutrition and diet and gut health. That wasn't so much there before. I think I think exercise has been known about for some time, but the the new focus on nutrition is starting to be taken seriously. So previously it was kind of a, a bit of an, a niche thing, and I think mainstream science is starting to realise that actually there is quite a lot to be quite a lot of benefit in thinking about diet. And I think we're going to see much more um, rigorous scientific study of that over the next few years. So another theme that I picked up on was was what I, what I would call technology innovation. So there were quite a few companies displaying products. Um, and we'll do some videos on these in the next few weeks and um, that have really quite interesting solutions to common problems in Parkinson's. So, so obviously curing and treating Parkinson's is one avenue, but if you can't do that, then having something that compensates for a particular symptom can also be very helpful. So there were some interesting devices that um, help people who freeze when they walk. And there's a device that sort of is like an anti-tremor device. So you put it on your on your shaking hand and it sort of cancels out the tremor so you can write properly and things like that. That was quite clever. And there were things like augmented reality headsets. So, so you could do sort of interactive exercises, which are really great. And all of those things weren't around four years ago, and they're just starting to come into the mainstream now. So that, that was kind of an interesting trend. Yeah, that's really helpful. Actually, one thing, it's not scientific at all. <laughs> Second, this Good little yeah. squidgy, stressful, tiny, fits in your palm, was given to me by the chap that does laughing yoga. And he had a dog called Charlie to help him. He's got Parkinson's. A person out there suggested to hold a pebble or something in your hand if you've got a an arm that doesn't swing, which is quite common in Parkinson's. And what I've been doing is putting this in my hand and squeezing it when I walk. I think it's what it does is it reminds me I've got something in my hand, which so I'm saying to myself, swing my arm. By swinging my arm, it helps my leg movements. So it's just little tips like that. So if you carry a pebble or something in your hand, and then it, it's just a reminder to swing your arm, which will just help your movement. So not scientific at all, but a really helpful tip that I've taken away when I walk. There's a genuine feeling that I think we're quite close to one or two new drugs hitting the market. Yeah. Well, there's the Exenatide trial, isn't it? Which is, I think, in phase three right now? Or is yes. it to begin? I'm not sure, actually, I can't remember anymore. But um, that I'm hoping, you know, by 2025, we might have something because that has so far um, shown shown to slow progression. 
um, in in mice and in the humans that it's been tested on so far. So, uh, so, so some definite themes coming out of the Congress. I think the nutrition one, the basic science, the technology innovation and the drug trials are just four things. There are plenty of other activities as well. Um, so I think it'll be really interesting to see how it pans out in, in a couple of years time when they have the next one. Mm. And we believe that's in North America, but the precise location to be announced. So Jodie and Shafak, would you recommend to people out there to attend the next World Parkinson's Congress and and why? What would be the one take home that you would say to people? Well, my first take home is it's amazing. You must go. You must save your pennies and go. It is honestly such a nice and lovely experience. It exceeded all. I went out with an open mind and I was really excited about it. So the fact that it's exceeded my expectations is quite something. Um, definitely go. You come back with friends and laughs and giggles, and a glow. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I would echo that definitely. The people side is fantastic. Um, obviously, it costs a bit of money, but um, it, it's well worth the investment. Um, and I think as well as as just making lots of friends and, and meeting many amazing people, you come back with with just increased knowledge of all sorts of things. If you're if you're scientifically interested like I am, then you you learn a ton of information about all the research that's going on. But even if you're not a scientist, there's just so many interesting things. Um, you know, there's sort of um, shows about all sorts of stuff, exercise classes, a book club, all sorts of things. Um, so it's a fantastic opportunity to learn lots of things about Parkinson's. And I'd just add, I think it gives us all hope. Um, the amount of people that are doing amazing things despite having Parkinson's, such as the cyclists that arrived in Barcelona from having cycled from London with Parkinson's and uh, amazing things like that. Um, you know, don't don't let it stop your life. Your life is uh, can still continue despite Parkinson's. You can help us keep making this content by simply subscribing to the channel. And remember, there's a new video every week.